Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we're now live, so a welcome to the uh, to the September meeting of the uh, of council. Back on Zoom again, unfortunately, but uh, at least we're all all of available. Um, look, there's no apologies at the moment. Graham's still having trouble with his uh, audio. Um, but it can, we can see him, so hopefully that that um, that links in. And um, he's also got to leave at about ten thirty anyway. So apologies for Graham when he when he um, ducks out at ten thirty. And Bruce, you can hear us, okay? Yeah, I'm right along. She can hear me. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, so uh, the, with that, just. Um, um, well, I'm not sure whether they're apologies or not, but uh, with that, can we just have a mover and seconder in case uh, Graham can't get on for apologies? Yeah. That's Lou and um, Elwyn. All those in favour, just wave your hands. <laughs> no one's against. Okay, uh, it's carried. Um, were there any uh, disclosures of any members' interests? No. Okay, so um, item three. Liz, anyway. listed, listed. Yeah, I've got oh, my Oh, sorry, hand. Liz, didn't see right. you. Uh, yeah, just uh, item 17, the Mighty River Domain liquor bands. Okay, well, we can record that. Thanks for that, Liz. It's no others. All right. Um, so any um, late items, item three, any late items that anyone's got that they wish to bring up? No, we have none. Okay, confirmation of the order of the meeting, item four. Um, I've got no changes. Is everyone happy with that? Okay, so Claire, are you moving? Move Claire and seconded Liz. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, so the next meet, uh, next issue is um, number five, the councillors' updates on attendances. This should be fairly short, seems we've lost half the month or <laughs> with, with the COVID, but did anyone have anything specific that they wanted to bring up? Yeah, Claire and then Philip. Um, well, I just attended three waters webinars. Um, yeah, there were a few online ones, so... It was quite good to um, get a bit more information, although I did feel a bit frustrated that I wasn't able to answer, ask questions, I guess, you know, because they're a big group, really, and they're just um, focusing maybe on just one question or something. Yeah, um, but at least there's more information coming out. Yes, well, we've got till the end of uh, next month to, to make our submissions before a final draft I suppose is put out for for comments so um, yeah look there's still a heap of information to come I think Claire mm. yeah. Lou um, Philip was next sorry yep thank you thanks Jim um, yeah a couple of things um, it's been a couple of months since the council meeting but um, yeah I was, I was very lucky enough to attend the um, national local government um, conference in Blenheim uh, a couple of weeks few, or a month ago now with uh, Jim and Liz and Gary. Um, it was just really uh, benefited hugely from that. Um, got to know a few of the other mayors and CEs and what have you that I've known before, but got to know new new um, new CEs and what have you around the country. Um, it was really apparent that... Um, that uh, you know, we're all in it. We all have got the same issues and things. Some of us, you know, all of us ha um, have successes within our councils, but there's also challenges, and some have got bigger than, bigger than others. And uh, um, and obviously, with the three waters, that's a that's a topical thing at the moment. So uh, we're all working through that. Um, also, with Liz, um, attended the. Uh, opening of the community um, Mariah in Cambridge for the vaccination centre, so that's Popery. Um, some chamber events. Um, 
Well, we at the moment we've got a council eyesight review on, but I attended the national eyesight review down in Wellington a few weeks ago. Um, senior council meeting uh, attended that a few weeks ago. Um, CCTV meeting in Cambridge um, again a few weeks ago, and a Louise Upson uh, public forum a few weeks ago as well. But yeah, I'll see nothing in the last couple of weeks. So that's about it. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. Was there any anyone else, Bruce? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'd just like to thank all councillors and especially uh, council in general for um, the cordiality of um, Chris Smith when he came to speak um, at our last or in between that before we locked down. Um, uh, the key point in that is that hopefully in time we can join Tiamudu and Cambridge under one CompSafe or whatever name it may be, WIPA. Uh, we've been trying to work for that on a long time, and I know. Our chief executive is trying to push that a little bit. It's been our initiative from the beginning to have one unit. Um, the other point is that, okay, the camera issue, it will be resolved in time. The, uh, we're trying to keep it in front. I'll say we, I suppose it's part of, I'm part of ComSafe as well. Uh, the criminals know where the cameras are. They, they can they put a pole up there. They can push them out of line. It, it's really hard to say one step ahead of these guys, but um, I think one day we will win and grateful for the council for their support. Thanks, Bruce. Lou, and then Roger, and then Susan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just quickly, we had a very, very positive Zone 2 meeting uh, down in Taupo, which was excellent. Um, just quietly, we had a very, very good uh, Western Bypass meeting, uh, workshop, and uh, that was very, very positive, and I think things are moving forward well there. Um, Civil Defence, the minutes will be circulated to you soon. Um, but we have some issues there that are growing quite well. And at the moment, we're having meetings every at four o'clock every day with Civil Defence or the Joint Committee and towed into all of that. So just to put everyone in the picture with it. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Is there any indication that the, the, there's going to be a declaration um, of a Civil Defence emergency or are we just working um, with central government still handling all of the social welfare issues we are actually at the moment we were actually only in a watch mode and there's yeah. no idea of a declaration at the moment we actually believe that we will see the Waikato and probably parts of the other area become a buffer area and we'll have multiple boundaries so we might see the Bay of Plenty and Taranaki etc could lose down to two and we might remain in three okay thanks Lou Roger yeah thanks Lou Jim um Along with uh, Liz, virtually attended a, a, a wellness group that's um, getting together on Zoom um, a couple of times a week with uh, people like the Chamber and uh, Council representatives and Community House. And it's indicating um, quite some concerns out there in terms of the increased demand, say, for food parcels but also the increase in domestic violence. So it's really a good uh, way of keeping uh, abreast and concerned about what's happening through this uh, COVID lockdown. That's really been um, a great thing to attend. Thanks. Thanks, Roger. Susan. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, just quickly, um, I attended um, an urban miners um, open day with um, together with Louise Upston. Um, it, yeah, look, they're a fantastic outfit and joining forces uh, with the Te Omutu Rotary um, to address issues of um, e-waste in our district, doing some fantastic work. Just a bit of a plug for them. They're also looking for a marketing person to help with, with their um, activities. If anybody knows somebody who fit that role, um, get, um, get in touch with them. Uh, the other significant thing I guess that I attended was the opening together with the Mayor of the uh, Te Omutu Vaccination Centre in the Te Arawai car park, officiated obviously by um, our Shane Teruki and, and the Mayor, um, kicked off uh, what was uh, appeared to be a short-lived <laughs> stint at trying to vaccinate before um, this next lockdown, but I understand it's now open again at um, various times. I actually got my first shot that day, so I'm due for my second later in the week, but um, yeah, they're the two main things. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, Susan. Uh, Hazel. Um, oh, thank, thank you, Jim. Um, I t we had a meeting with the Caravan Association down on the proposed site um, off Parongia Road. 
uh, the neighbours there had got um, um, lots of questions to ask. And so the president of the Caravan Association met there with them to try and um, give a good explanation. You certainly can't beat meeting up with the people concerned um, and explaining the whole site to them. But um, it's it certainly looks like it's going to be a, a, a very nice site, but there's quite a few processes to go through yet. But I think we finished the meeting. I, I was very pleased to have um, the staff there as well, who were able to um, give a, a very good um, explanation as to how we what were all the next steps. So yes, that's looking fairly likely. Thanks, Hazel. Philip and then Liz. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Just briefly, just adding on to Susan's comment about urban uh, miners. Um, made the finals for Keep New Zealand Beautiful under the Community uh, Services Award. Um, and we nominated them from Destination Cambridge. So that, those, that award evening is in October. So, yep. Thank you. Hopefully yeah, they'll be able to hold it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we couldn't last year, but uh, who knows? Yep. Yeah, yep. that's right. Liz. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Hey, just a few things. So I um, hosted Minister Nash um, uh, just to have a wee look at the Tiawa Cycleway between Cambridge and Hamilton. So we did that uh, did that last month. And then also we had Minister Jamie Strange come through to Cambridge and uh, take a look at our flash new Cambridge pool. And I must admit he was pretty impressed, actually. Um, just want to mention the Jockey Club. So they had the official opening of the synthetic track. Uh, Winston Peters also um, attended that too. So that was uh, last month. Um, as Philip alluded to, um, and a number of us went to the local government uh, conference, which was held in Blenheim. Uh, and yeah, very, very worthwhile, it always is, just to catch up with our fellow colleagues, but also uh, lots of information that I think was very worthwhile attending. And just a short follow on uh, from that, we had the uh, Zone 2 meeting, which was held in Taupo. Uh, of course, the focus was on water reforms, but uh, yeah, we're able to get into a lot more detail, which I think was really, really helpful. Uh, also, just the Grow by Caddo presentation uh, that uh, I presented to um, a forum that is held in Hamilton every six weeks on YPA growth. So the audience is mostly CEOs from Hamilton, but also some the wider Waikato community as well. So it's just good to fly the, the YPA flag, I think, from time to time. And just a bit, local, a little bit of a, a local flavour. So yes, opened the Cambridge uh, Community Marae, the vaccination centre, um, last month, and also. Um, Roger alluded to the wellness meetings that uh, he and I are attending uh, twice a week with Kelly from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, but also Harriet from Community House. So that's a really good, um, I guess, forum for us to understand what the local needs might be um, around at the moment. So there's certainly a, um, I guess, a, um, yeah, a request from the community to stand up our buddy system. And I think, um, yeah, that's been followed through amongst council staff. So yeah, thanks, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Liz. Is there anyone else that had anything? Look, just just briefly from me, in terms of what's going on out there, we've obviously touched on the three waters and there's been a number of um, uh, meetings around the, the region, I suppose, and, and the first uh, uh, meeting of all of the councils from, from the proposed Area B met in uh, Taupo as well. Uh, and certainly there's still a, a significant, significant lack of information in certain areas. And I also via Zoom attended the uh, National Council meeting uh, late last week. And uh, certainly our President Stuart Crosby is talking with Nanaya, um, particularly about trying to get all of these reforms lined up and, and in some semblance of order and, and doing the future of local government first rather than last and uh, trying to sort out the, the issues over the three waters and the reform of the RMA, just to name probably the three, <coughs> excuse me, the three most important ones. So um, look, I think uh, across the country, there is still concerns about the three waters reform and just where it's sitting in the overall um, I suppose, review or thinking on, on local government. So there's a huge amount of work that we're going to get 
caught up with, I suppose, in the next uh, few months, looking just at um, how these reforms are going to impact on, on our service delivery and, and how we look after the well-being of the communities. So, yeah, it's certainly a, um, uh, an issue that we need to uh, keep abreast of, uh, but certainly... Uh, I suppose from, from the National Council perspective, there is a bit of a glimmer of hope that um, I was going to say the brakes might go on a little bit, but certainly um, some delay in the Three Waters reform to, to enable everybody to get the information that, that's required. And, and I'm certainly still getting daily, just yeah, daily um, requests from people um, requests almost demands asking for um, consultation and, and potentially a referendum on the issue. So the community is starting to um, ask questions and I suspect pointing the finger at local government saying we're not getting out and, and uh, consulting when it's central government that's saying, well, you really can't consult at the moment because you haven't got all of the information. So um, at some point, we're going to have to try and uh, alert and uh, I suppose inform the community of, of what's hap what's actually happening. So yeah, it's um, it's a difficult position to be in at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's really where my focus has been, and, and just on the vaccination centres that are that have opened up in in both towns. Um, look, obviously. I think all of us are doing our best to try and encourage people to go and get vaccinated. Um, we obviously can't keep as a, as a country going into level four lockdowns from an economic perspective. Um, so the quicker we can get the, the majority of our community protected through vaccinations, the better off we're all going to be, I think. Yeah, so that's probably it from me at the moment. But if there's any questions on the three waters, by all means, shoot them through either to myself or Gary. Did you have any get comments, Gary, on the on the, the reforms in general, not just the three waters, but the the RMA and and the futures for local government? There is a lot going on in this space. Um, when you cast your mind around the Productivity Commission. Um, the Ministry for the Environment doing um, its RMA reforms, uh, the DIA doing the water reforms, and um, then there's the, the future of local government um, to get the sequence of those uh, reviews in, in the right order would certainly be a major advantage. So starting with the future of local government and then reforming RMA and waters after that would be a useful, um, a useful step. Thanks, Gary. Okay, so um, back to the agenda then. Item six, the confirmation of the minutes of the 29th of June. Um, can I have a mover and seconder to receive those, please? Roger and Lou, all those in favour? No. Contrary, carried. So if we just quickly um, go through them, um, I think there's 28 pages or something like that on on the uh, on these minutes. So, is the preference just to um, rather than try and whip through them page by page? If there's any comments or any questions anyone's got on Claire. Um, yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, I did try and send through um, some annotations uh, yesterday. I'm not sure if they were received. Um, but the most concerning was there's a little error in the LTP itself um, on page 1,148, uh, 1, and it's to do with the paragraph to do with CCOs. Yeah. Did, did, did governance receive that, that email? I'm just waiting for a response, Claire. I don't um, remember seeing anything in relation to the CCOs on the minutes in the LTP that came through. Uh, what I did is I sent through a file with all the annotations from the agenda. It's generated through Diligent mm. and worked in the past. So it's just got a, a list. So I didn't have it in the body of the email. Um, I just said these are the annotations that I picked up. 
We did so, get some, but I'm not sure that we got. Well, did you just send one email? Yeah, yeah, one email. Because I don't remember seeing anything on the LTP, just checking. Well, if you have a look at page 1148, it was a track change about CCOs and like there's a little error, just a tiny one, and in, in the there's an apostrophe that's in the wrong place. But on the second line of the, the, the following paragraph, it says that there's the there's the use of the word institute, which I think is wrong. It's got council exists, oh sorry, control exists when the institute is exposed to risks and things. Well, we're not talking about an institute, we're talking about a council. So I think it was a sort of a standard paragraph that was inserted, but we should have changed institute to council. Um, th th thanks, Claire. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Of course, um, th these are minutes of the um, meeting where you ad adopted that that document. We'll have a look at that document and just, just check the point you're making. I suspect the word institute may well need to be institution, but we'll take a look at that. May be able to amend it as a, as a minor error. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so there's, there's really no substantive changes <clears throat> yep. Okay. So if everyone's happy with them as a true and correct record, then apart from those um, um, minor changes that we can put, uh, put right if there are typographical type or grammar errors, uh, we can fix those. But otherwise, everyone's happy with those minutes. So Hazel's moved the, their true and correct record and Philip has seconded. All those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. Then we have item seven, which is the uh, extraordinary council minutes of the 17th of August. Can I just interrupt? Sorry, Jim. Yeah, sorry. Hazel, Hazel, wasn't, Hazel wasn't at that uh, meeting, so she can't really move those. Her apology is recorded in the, the agenda. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry, oh. Hazel. Um, oh, okay. We'll change the mover. Can I have a, a new mover then, please? I'm happy. I'm happy. So, Actually, I wasn't... so I was Jenny, actually... who have we got there for mover and seconder? We have Philip we have as a, seconder. Yeah, and... Philip, yeah, sorry, Philip second that. I just need a mover. Okay. So you've I'm got happy. a mover. Yeah, yeah. Susan, Susan's moved and, yeah. All Philip those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. Jim, I wasn't actually waving my hand to move the, the, the motion. I was actually waving to agree, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> but anyway, and then I completely forgot that I, I wasn't. But that's all right, Hazel. It's just a reminder when you're at an auction to keep your hands down. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. I have been known to come home with stuff I didn't actually bid for. Yeah. Okay, we're on to item uh, seven, the extraordinary uh, uh, meeting. A mover and seconder to receive them. Oh. Yeah, Andrew and Lou, all those in favour? Aye. Oh. Contrary, it's carried. And just going through those quickly in terms of um, accuracy or any issues that anyone wants to bring up. There's only three pages. Page one, two, and three. Everyone's well. Three is only a signature block anyway. Um, so everyone's happy with that. Uh, mover and second of their true and correct record. Roger, I saw your finger go up. And Bruce, all those in favour? No. Uh -huh. Contrary, carried. And item eight, the document sealed under. Um, delegation, uh, Gary. I think it's only staff appointments. These are contractors, you wish it, who do oh, okay. uh, after hours noise and animal control. <clears throat> Is everyone happy with that? Yep. Happy to move. So Andrew's moved, Mike seconded. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Contrary, 
carried. Item nine, the Nahanapuri Village Concept Plan. Gary, who's, uh, Justine, are you? Thank you, Worship. Yes, Justine will present this. Yes, I'm so excited um, <laughs> about this one and to be kicking today off on such a positive note. You know, there's, there's been years of hard work that have gone into this village concept plan. Um, I will take the report as read. Um, we've had lots of awesome discussions about this. We've had lots of awesome public engagement um, on this project. And I'm really excited to get it over the line so that that community can, you know, they can, they can keep going um, with their growth. Um, you know, I last saw you on the 3rd of August. We had a workshop, had some great questions, which I was able to address through a Friday mail out. Um, and so I guess it's over to you if there's, if there's any other questions, final questions or comments that anyone has, I'm really happy to, to help. Well, thanks, Justine. And, and I agree with you. This has been a really long time coming, but it's good to have a, a good positive outcome and the, the community seems predominantly to be on board with it, which is, which is fantastic. But Claire, you had a question? Oh, well, more of a comment, really, and congratulations to Justine, because, yeah, it has been a, an extraordinary effort to get this finalised. And I think, you know, the feedback we've had, the community is, is behind it, and, and it's a great blueprint for the, for the growth that we are anticipating in the village. So I'm, I'm really wrapped that, that we're at this stage, and I'm also happy to move the resolution. Thanks, Claire. Uh, Bruce. Um, Justin, yes, congratulations. I, I know Claire and my life are, are a lot simpler now that you've sorted this out, but <laughs> yeah, congratulations to the staff and everyone involved. I only got one question, and how to, and it's on page 570 on Reed Road. Okay, everything's nice. There's a lot of nice words there, but how are things like the, the uh, they say they, they might extend the road for a cycleway? How are they picked up in the future? Because you know, like in, in say three years time or four years time, we you know, those words are there. But yeah. I think it's a good suggestion. But how are they ever picked up? Um, so that will be through the planning process. So our planning team is um, familiar with the village concept plan, um, and so is Brian um, and, and the roading team. So that would be a, a condition, I guess, of any resource consents in the future that we would be looking at and needs to be consistent with, or we'd be looking, sorry, at the village concept plan. Um, I guess the other thing is that, you know, that community have told us that they, they really want um, good walking and cycling, safe walking and cycling access, especially for children to get to that school. So, you know, I think there's also going to be a high degree um, of community, um, I don't know, interest to kind of keep keep us honest and make sure that we do deliver that as well. I thank you again. Yeah, thanks, Justine. Okay, no other questions or comments. So we have a mover clear and Bruce, you seconded. Yep. Yeah. So if there's no further discussion, thanks again, Justine. It's great to get this one tidied up. So um, uh, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Contrary? Carried. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, item 10, uh, plan changes 12, 15, and 16. Gary, who's... Uh, I yeah, Tony Quickfall is here to talk to this. So this is uh, Growth Cell uh, T2, which is the one that goes between Frontier Road and um, uh, Perongia Road. We've also got permeable services and some technical improvements. Uh, it's uh, the end of the process for these plan changes. So over to Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Um, good morning, councillors and your worship. Um, so, yeah, as Gary, Gary said, this is the end of the process. Um, three plan changes here, which is 12, um, the T2 rezoning, people services and technical improvements. Been through hearings um, uh, and the appeal periods have closed. There were no appeals on any of them. So they're deemed to be operative. And this is really just a procedural decision to um, formalise them as operative. Um, so if you agree with, uh, with the report, it's just... Uh, just a decision to make them operative and 27th of September is the nominated operative date. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, but happy to take any questions. Any questions for Tony? We've discussed them pretty much on the way through. Okay, Tony, it doesn't look like there's any questions. So we have recommendations A through to D, I think it is. Yep. 
So is somebody happy to move all four, uh, Claire and Roger? No further discussion? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Carried. Thank you Thank for that. Thank you very much. Clap. Thanks, Tony. Item 11, uh, summary of the annual report to the Alcohol Regulatory and Licensing Authority. Gary, I presume. Yeah, thank you, Carl Your Worship. Will be here, so, the Sale and Supply of Liquor Act 2012, Carl, Carl has an annual report for us. Is he around? Yeah, he's lurking on screen too, but he'll be here in a second. Ah, you're right, Carl. Good morning. Sorry, I wasn't expecting you to be ahead of time, so I just caught me off guard there, but that's all <laughs> fine. Um, good morning, Your Worship Councillors. So yes, this is the report that you see um, every every year, the report from Council to uh, the Alcohol Regulatory and Licensing Authority. So it's divided into uh, four sections uh, this time. The first is the actual report itself, and then there's some appendices to that, which are really for your information as much as anything, um, to be consistent with how we've reported this uh, previously. Um, the, the authority, um, as has been the case for the last couple of years, um, ask us to file this report online through like an electronic survey type um, uh, format, um, not in a written format like it is now. And um, they also set the questions. So the questions are largely the same as last year, and uh, therefore a number of the responses are almost the same as last year. So I'll just quickly whip through the highlights and then if there's any um, questions afterwards. So. Appendix 1 being the report to Taala itself. Um, sections 1 to 3 are simply staff uh, summaries for ALA. Um, I've probably a flip to that just to yourself. Uh, section 4 is a very select um, request for information on some of the applications that the, um, the committee has received over the course of the year. And again, there's an appendix there um, for yourselves outlining all of the, the applications that this, uh, this committee has dealt with. Um, section five, they're asking for some of the trends that um, each individual committee has seen through the course of the year. Uh, the number of applications for us has uh, returned to a level that's fairly much consistent with um, uh, pre-COVID levels, which was encouraging. We'll see whether that continues. Um, the number of hearings was up mainly around um, an increase in, in enforcement type activity, uh, control purchase operations and similar. Uh, but the number of temporary authorities was down. So temporary authorities is the license that you get for three months if you're taking over a business. Um, so that sort of suggests that um, there was a reduction in the number of businesses um, changing ownership, which may have been due to the, the uncertainty that was around at the time. Brief summary on the committee membership and just uh, just highlighting to Arla, we are aware that those reappointments um, uh, need to occur before the end of the year and that we had completed a review of uh, the inspectorate that uh, undertakes the actual reporting uh, to, to the committee. Very brief commentary on some operational issues there and again raising some of the concerns we have around fees and charges, particularly if an application does go to hearing um, that um, the, the fees that are being paid generally do not uh, cover council's activities there. Uh, section six, um, initiatives that have been implemented. Um, obviously last year with COVID, um, we had to make a significant number of, of changes to doing, doing things differently. We've continued quite a number of those and um, Arla will have that previous report. We're looking to upgrade uh, use a little more technology so officers actually out in the field being able to do some of the data collection and um, reporting that they currently have to return to the office to do so we're hoping that will speed that up and when your chamber's audio system was replaced um, we managed to secure the the former system that we now have available um, so this committee and others can use them for hearings and, and other locations, which has been extremely useful, um, like particularly when the, the rooms in Cambridge were under renovation, for example, when we had limited options, we were able to go and use um, other venues. Some process improvements, uh, we had a, a hearing where there were a number of objections and we spent quite a lot of hearing time simply determining who had status as objections, so we're looking at, at refining that process and uh, 
dealing with the the objections first so we can go into a licensing hearing with everybody on the same same page and we're still um, doing a bit of work there to try and move this committee to more of a paperless based approach which is difficult when we're dealing with with members of the public and other agencies but it's something that's underway um, sections uh, seven there refers to local alcohol policy so that's very brief yes we have one and it's currently in force um, section eight uh, exactly the same question as last year what effects do we think the alcohol policy is having and again the commentary is very similar to to last year that we already had a policy before this act and um, the local alcohol policy um, implemented most of the things that we, we well continued most of the things that we already had in place under that policy that it's providing a more consistent approach for agencies and we're now seeing public objections where they are referencing the local alcohol policy so that's a lot more understanding that it's out there and what it's about and the locational criteria of where licensed premises are allowed to be is something that we regularly see being, being highlighted. Uh, the, the policy is due for review between June, sorry, before June next year, um, which um, in a way is quite good. This is one of the earlier laps that was done. And as hearings have been held, we've identified some issues with um, definitions and other things which need to be refined. And the the comments about whether there should be a cap on licensed premises is something that is quite regularly um, been highlighted and brought to our attention. Uh, so again, nine and 10, pretty self-explanatory that it's uh, due, due, for, due for review next year. Uh, section 11, um, again, same question as last year. Um, in the past tense, how had uh, COVID impacted on operations? Um, Obviously, when this report was written, we weren't in a, in a lockdown, so a number of these things are back in place. Um, we've uh, yeah, continued with uh, staff working from home and maintaining as much of um, our ability to process applications as we can. Uh, inspectors are, are using technology to do remote interviews and, um, and touch base with the licensees as, as they need to. Um, obviously, we didn't expect the reduction, and we expected a reduction in business, but that wasn't uh, wasn't the case. And um, just highlighting that we did have a lot of inquiries around uh, different businesses who was allowed to operate, and a lot of uh, inquiries where people were sort of thinking outside of the square in terms of looking to make their businesses more more diverse um, in times of of uncertainty. Uh, we obviously saw a downturn of, of events during the, the lockdown period, but those had uh, largely returned. And we continued our liaison with, with other agencies. Uh, Section 12 is talking about whether the Act is meeting its, its objectives. Um, this is quite a sub subjective sort of comment for us because we don't see a lot of the information that one might consider when assessing alcohol related harm. We don't get a lot of um, re reports back from the likes of hospitals and other agencies. Um, so we can only really talk in very, very general terms um, to say we're not, not getting a lot of reports of there being issues out there um, with alcohol related premises. Um, uh, comments on objections there that we are seeing more public objections and a greater use of social media to rally support for some of those objections and um, a few comments here around conditions and other procedural matters that um, the committee has dealt with. Section 13 again the COVID related question about um, whether we think COVID affected the objective of the Act. And um, again, it's very hard for us to comment, some subjective comments there around obviously more people were, were consuming alcohol at home rather on licensed premises. Therefore, um, what, what we might normally see in public places, for example, um, or drink driving um, wasn't as prevalent, but there may have been other issues that um, we're not aware of. And certainly alcohol continued to be easily available um, as, it, as it is now. So it's um, unclear at this stage um, what effect that may have had. 
and section 14 um, sort of links in there that some of the changes and trends that we've seen under the Act are COVID related, um, people's lateral thinking and types of, in terms of different types of licenses that they might want to hold or changes to their current licenses and proposals that were simply outside anything that the Act envisaged when it came into place in, in 2012. Uh, section uh, 15, um, what changes to the Act would we find beneficial? And I think it's fair to say um, the Act is, is, is old and would benefit from quite a significant uh, review in, in many areas. And it simply just hasn't kept up with, um, with the modern day practices and what, what people expect. Um, so we, we have suggested previously to ARLA that um, a, a full review of the Act would be, would be useful. And there's a number of different areas that we've um, highlighted. Um, for example, in a, in a local area, the, the bodies that can hold special licenses is quite restricted. Um, when clubs often end up hosting funerals because they're the only venue large enough to accommodate it, that can be quite a cumbersome process at times. And uh, a couple of issues that um, were raised through elected members um, during the course of the year. So one related in particular to, to vineyards and similar operating in the Waipa district who were not able to obtain a license to sell their own product through their own cafe and some anomalies around the restrictions the Act placed on who could have licenses. So we've highlighted that previously and we're highlighting it again as um, something that um, could be changed to certainly um, improve the situation for some of our businesses and the the rest home and retirement village question is something very similar where we've had a number of different um, establishments across the district um, looking at this option but finding it very difficult to assess where they they fit in the overall scheme a lot of the templates in the act are out of date and uh, we find the issue of a renewal notice so uh, what that's referring to is when a, a business applies to renew its license every three years, they are getting a replacement license with the new conditions on it, and they're also getting a piece of paper that says we're renewing your license. The, the second piece of paper is effectively redundant, and we're trying to get that removed as another, mo another way of streamlining the process, and also a little more flexibility in terms of the qualifications that staff could have. So that's the report itself to Arla, and then I'm not going to spend too much time on the other appendices. The first two are certainly pretty self-explanatory. And then there's the spreadsheet, which is just the overall comparison of um, applications, um, processed and licenses that are in force across the district. So I'm happy to leave it at that and take any questions. Thanks, Carl. That's a really comprehensive report. I hope they do something with it when, when they get them from around the country. But were there any questions or comments, Liz? Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, I guess my, my comment um, and question for you, Carl, is along what Jim just alluded to, and that we've seen a number of these reports over the years. Do you feel that your suggestions um, actually go somewhere? I mean, the, the uh, report that you get back or the comment that you get back, are, are you actually, do you feel like you're gaining some traction? Yeah, through his worship, um Good things take time. Um, we have seen some improvements. I think the most noticeable one that um, comes to mind is that previously uh, for, for a temporary authority, which um, like I said, was when a, a purchaser is taking over a business and wants a temporary license for three months, we used to have to, have to convene a full um, licensing committee hearing of three members in order to deal with those. And they removed that requirement and the chairperson can do those alone now, which is streamlined that process. Last year was quite interesting. Um, Arla actually wrote to all councils and said how extremely disappointed they were with the low number of reports they received, which was interesting. And then two weeks later had to write to us again and apologize that they had a technical issue and half the reports they received hadn't been um, being processed. So they are obviously receiving them and, um, and uh, reviewing them. And the reason for that being is that the authority themselves then has to report to, to justice. Um, so it's part of a, a larger process. So we do see some improvements. And um, again, we're just trying to use it as, as a tool to, to introduce some of these things that we are, are seeing at local level. So hopefully we will see some, yeah. some things adopted. 
Thanks, Carl. Because and look, and really, really pleased to hear that there's going to be a review before June. Um, you know, I know we haven't had the direct conversation, but um, Cambridge recently did, I guess, via Facebook and other social social media um, places, feels quite. And I think feels reasonably strongly around the number of off licences. Um, and I'm wondering around, you know, the the opportunity to introduce a limit around how many off licences there might be in our larger towns. So really welcome that conversation um, and the consultation we can do with our community on that going forward. Thanks. Thanks, Liz. Um, Claire and then Mike. Yeah, Claire. Thanks, Carl. Um, the question I have is, is to do with your comment that you're not really sure what harm is being um, perpetrated, you know, through alcoholic activities, you know, in the community because you're not getting feedback from those agencies or those, um, yeah, like hospitals you mentioned. Um, so I'm a bit concerned about that. Like, have you been asking um, the authority to make sure that you do have those feedback loops so that we are being informed um, if, if this harm is being, you know, like getting a good indication of, of what harm is being caused? Yes, we're definitely working, working our way through different methods of possibly doing that. Um, under the previous Act, we used to get um, things, including the last drink drive survey, which was police information on every driver that was stopped in a district um, for alcohol-related offences and where they've been drinking last and the levels and a whole lot of other supporting information. And um, we just don't see that now for a number of reasons. Um, concerns about privacy and data sharing and a whole range of things. Um, so we we are starting to put the onus back on the reporting agencies, the, the police and, and others, to try and get a little more of this information. But they are they're probably as, as tied in terms of what they can provide as, as, as we are. So we, we definitely need to look at, at those different options for finding that information to both inform local decisions about different applications but also for the for the bigger picture of of what this means for for the country as a whole um yeah like i was interested in the the medical side of things like whether or not um you know a and e or or local um medical centers report you know any any injuries that that um, they are processing and whether or not alcohol, you know, has been a factor and stuff like that, because it wouldn't just be drink driving. No, they certainly do. And that has, some of that information has been seen from time to time. The difficulty usually is to try and link that to specific areas or to, you know, even to specific premises, which is often what the licence committee, licensing committee is looking at. So, you know, Waikato Hospital, for example, may see X number of patients that have fallen over and injured themselves due to being intoxicated, but they could have come from anywhere around the region and um, certainly may not link to to licensed premises. So that's that's really the, the link that's missing, I think, is to try and connect that that greater amount of data that's out there to, to what is happening locally. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Mike. Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, how are you going, Carl? Hey, just a question on page six of the report under growth and development. Um, just that the Waipa district initially planned for an 18% reduction in growth um, a growth across the district, and you alluded to it. Just wondering what that initial 18% was based on. Was it sort of based on post lockdown of 2020 or just where those numbers initially came from? Yes, that was based on the, the economic advice that we had um, coming towards the end of the, the first lockdown. Um, it was, you know, very much turned out to be a worst case scenario, but the figures were that um, you know, across a, a lot of councils' business that um, we were likely to expect a significant down, downward sort of trend in terms of you know development, building, and other things that flow on to to the work that this committee does. And um, yeah, obviously that um, didn't turn out to be the case for Waipa. Yeah, no, excellent. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Any other questions or comments to Carl? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Um, as I said, a really comprehensive report, but we have a recommendation there, A and B, um, obviously, to forward the report um, on. Uh, a mover is Mike and seconded Claire. All those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. Thank you. Um, item 12, the Mangatautri Reserve 
committee. Gary, I presume Anna's going to take it, take it away, or do you want to comment? No, no comment for me, uh, Your Worship. Welcome, Anna. Thanks, Anna. And, and a, a little bit that, like the Nahinapuri uh, <laughs> town concept plan, or uh, this has been a long time coming, but it looks like a, a fantastic reserve management plan. So over to you. And councillors, um, yes, it has been a long time coming and you probably thought last October when um, SPMP adopted this, that that was it done and dusted. Um, the Reserves Act does require that the Minister of Conservation approves the management plan and we sought that approval via DOC. Um, they took some bit of time in their consideration of that matter and came back to us saying that they thought we should use our delegation um, that we received from them in 2013 for council to... Um, provide that ministerial approval. So the focus of that ministerial approval is on following due process and following the Reserves Act process uh, and also ensuring that the principles of the plan are in accordance with um, the Reserves Act requirements for Senate Reserves. So uh, we feel very comfortable that we've met those requirements and are seeking today um, the approval under delegation from the council. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Anna. Any questions anyone has? No, look, thanks, Anna. Uh, it's a, uh, a great uh, reserve management plan. So uh, if we can just have a, a seconder, a mover and seconder for that A and B, uh, Bruce and Elwyn, all those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Um, item 13, uh, Iwi Consultative Committee, some appointments and resignations to be handled. Gary, uh, Joe's handling. Yes. Uh, good morning. Um, I thought I'd cover off both reports as we've got two committee um, appointments and uh, resignations in a row. Um, so, as you know, uh, because these are committees of council, um, any appointments and resignations need to come through council for approval. So the first report we have um, that I uh, before you that I'm going to take is read is the ICC report and we've got three resignations there and one appointment. Has anyone got any questions on that one? No, nope, not by the look of it, Joe. It's, so look, we'll just handle it um, um, before we move on to the next one. Um, so just a mover and second yep. to, to reprove Marcus and Andrew. All those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. Thanks for that. And so we're on to the Prongy Award Committee, item 14. Yes, we are. So there again, we've got a uh, resignation and appointment. So that's the changeover for the uh, representative for the Prongia Community Association um, there in that recommendation. So that's um, resignation of John Wood in replacing with Ruth Webb. Thanks, Joe. Claire, did you have any comments or are you moving it? Yes, yes, I'd just be really happy to move that. It's good to see this being tidied up and, yeah, a new, a new person coming on. Yeah, thanks, Claire. So a seconder. Um, Lou, all those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. Thank you for that. Um, item 15, Infometrics Economic Update. Um, Gary, who's handling this? Steve, is it? Yeah, Steve Tritt's available for comment. You wish it. Where is he? Uh, he's just unmuted himself. He'll be here any second. Yes, oh, there <laughs> Steve, how are you? Yeah, good, <clears throat> good morning, Your Worship and Councillors. Um, I'll take my report as read, um, <laughs> along with the accompanying um, Infometrics Quarterly Economic Monitor. Um, which was published um, before the level four lockdown. Um, Brad will be presenting on lockdown 2.0 at uh, this afternoon at one. So I'll confine a few summary remarks to the quarterly economic report. Um, so um, lockdown will hopefully be a short set setback to economic activity. Um, Waipa District has a strong economic base and should be 
less affected than other districts. Um, our labour market uh, remains tight, um, both in Waipa and across uh, New Zealand. And these effects are expected to persist. Um, supply chain issues for importers and exporters are getting, um, are getting difficult and this will persist for 12 to 18 months. Um, Waipa made a great recovery after lockdown one um, on the strength of the underlying uh, economy. So we could expect that again. Just a couple of highlights from the um, latest uh, Infometrics report, again, was pre-lockdown. Um, our economic activity uh, was up 6.6 .6 to the year June 21. Um, that's compared to 5.4 across the Waikato and 4.2 across the country. Um, consumer spending in Waipa District was up 12% for the year to June 21. Um, and compared to pre-lockdown times, we were up um, 12%. Um, <clears throat> the uh, annual average unemployment rate in Waipa was 2.9% in June 21. Um, up from 12 months earlier, but still lower than New Zealand at, at 4.7. Um, total visitor spend uh, was 138 million in Waipa District up to June 21, which was up from 118 million um, during the um, COVID year and was still up from 125 million uh, visitor spend pre-COVID. Um, pre um, that's about all. Provisional GDP for Waipa is $3 billion uh, for the year June 21. And that's nearly 10% of the Waikato region's GDP. Um, I think that's, that's probably mm. enough stats. <coughs> you'll, get, you'll get a lot more at um, one o'clock and a lot of kind of recent um, lockdown information. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, the, the, whole, the whole picture looks really buoyant. So um, uh, it's somewhat masked, I suppose, with the rapid increase in, in building costs and, and values, I suppose. But um, yeah, so were there any comments that anyone had, um, Mike? Oh, thank you, Worship. Um, yes, yeah, Steve, you know, I think I know the answer sort of, but on one of the indicator pages there, un under residential consent, because most of the um, statistics for Waipa in particular are, are well above either the national norm or the Waikato regional norm, except residential consents, um, with the national norm being at sort of 17.8%, and we're sort of down at 10.1%. Do you think that's because of lack of supply of land, or, or is there other reasons why our consents compared with the rest of the nation are down? I mean, it feels really buoyant, but... Yeah, uh, look, I'm, I'm really happy to look into that and, um, and rationalise that against the the growth report that um, that we get, um, the, the growth report suggests that, that Waipa is really busy. So it's kind of interesting to see um, that we're actually not quite a, as busy as New Zealand as a whole. What what happens when with, with New Zealand as a whole figures is that we get completely swamped by Auckland. So, so if, if Auckland's going gangbusters, then, then they dominate the New Zealand um, stats. But I'm, I'm quite happy to kind of look into that. Um, you might also see that our commercial um, consents were down, but that was coming off a very high level of activity with, you know, with Lakewood, Vizzy, um, APL, uh, and some really big projects. So... I'll follow up um, on that for you, Mike. Yeah, thanks, that, Stephen. Actually, that's a very good comment about Auckland can skew the statistic here. I hadn't really thought of that, but yeah, thanks for that. And and just um, Mike, when I was reading it, it's um, when we're talking about percentage increases, um, when we've had a um, a background, I suppose, of high growth, 
um, our increases on on a high growth, um, I suppose, history is uh, sometimes it skews the picture a bit when other people are just catching up or other regions are catching up, I should say. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I totally hear that. And I mean, hey, I mean, 10% growth is still pretty phenomenal, one would have thought. Yeah. Roger. No. Oh, sorry, your, your light came up. That was all. Were no. there any other comments? We look forward to um, Brad's, um, Brad's comments uh, this afternoon. So um, everyone will be back at one o'clock. So any other comments or anyone had? Otherwise, um, the recommendations are just to, uh, um, just to receive the information. And Philip and Mike, the seconds, all those in favour? No. Contrary, carried. Thanks for that, Steve. Thank we'll you. see you at one, probably. Yep. yep. Item 16, the adoption of the waste, uh, water and trade waste bylaw. Thank you, Worship. So this is uh, uh, another um, piece of policy work uh, that's come to the end of its process. Uh, submissions have been heard and Graham is here to uh, answer any queries. Graham, we'll hand over to you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, you will recall from the Strategic Planning and Policy Committee meeting on the 3rd of August, um, you heard and read the submissions, considered those, um, all the changes arising from those submissions we'd tracked into the draft bylaw, all of that was accepted and the committee recommended that council adopts the bylaw. So this is the opportunity to adopt the, uh, the bylaw to come into effect from the 1st of October and the, the current old bylaws will then be revoked at the same time. And um, I'm hoping this is very straightforward. Thanks, Graham, for discuss. But um, any questions or comments that anyone has of, of Graham? Jim, I'm happy to move. Yeah. Thanks, sure. Susan. Moved, Susan. Seconded, Lou. Uh, any other comments before I put the motion? Oh, Marcus? Uh, I've got, um, one comment. Does this? Um, I was just reading in the paper the last few weeks about how Auckland's having troubles um, prosecuting uh, industries that don't comply with their waste, uh, water, and, and trade waste thing. Does this bylaw give us teeth to be a bit more proactive about that rather than not being able to prosecute? Um, I'm afraid we're still constrained by all the legal requirements around bylaws anyway, so we're not going to be in, in any better or worse position than uh, than anyone else. I think the the key thing, um, and I can see Martin's online as well, that um, his team will obviously work with all our all our uh, customers anyway, so ho hopefully um, they'll all be on top of the issues and, and such matters never arise, but um, um, other than that, we, we've got to go through the same legal process as every other council. Okay, thanks for that, Graham. Hopefully, as you say, we don't get to the prosecution stage, but it's always a challenge when you do. Okay, so we have a mover and a seconder. Um, I'll put the motion. It's a and A and B. All those in favour? Aye. No. Contrary. Carried. Thank you. Thank you for that. And we have item 17, the Mighty River Domain Temporary Liquor Bans. And Liz has declared a, an interest in, in this issue. Uh, or, uh, um, but who's handling this, Gary? Uh, Bruce Nunns is here to answer any questions. There is a, an appendix one to the report which outlines the events affected by um, by this ban, but uh, Bruce is here to answer any questions you wish. Okay, so are there any questions to Bruce? Did you want to make any comment, Bruce? 
No, no, it's uh, up Kia ora, good morning. No, no comments. It's, uh, basically, this is a recommendation from the Finance and Corporate Committee from yeah. the 17th of August. Okay, no comments. Andrew? Yeah, I'd like to move, thanks. Yeah, Andrew's moving. Seconded, Mike. All those in favour? Aye. Contrary, carried. So, thanks, sorry, sorry, through the... Chair, yes. I, and, and it's just a, it's just a nothing. It's just a one minute party, but I could have it wrong. But all the times there, they sort of go from twelve o one a.m. to five p.m. and then nine p.m. to eleven fifty nine. So I just, re I could be wrong that you could have a hard out one minute party between twelve and twelve o one. Yeah, technically yeah. yes. You probably can, Mike, but I don't want to be going to something that's as short as that so <laughs> okay happy, happy. yeah thanks mike so that that's been put in and um and carried so we're now on to um item 18 the resolution to exclude the public gary Thank, thank you, Worship. No, no uh, comments from me, but uh, probably uh, if you uh, adopt this um, recommendation, then probably an appropriate time for a 10 minute break for um, morning tea, Worship. Yeah, thanks, Gary. So everyone's happy to uh, got property issues and uh, to deal with. Um, so a mover and seconder to go into committee and Philip and Roger, all those in 